Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be discussing Royal Assassin, the second book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. Now, I have to say right off the bat, I loved this book, and Robin Hobb is very quickly becoming one of my new favorite authors. I really did like the first book. It was slow, it took a bit to get used to Robin Hobb's writing, but all of that set up and being used to it, right off the bat in Royal Assassin, it's just the book seemed to take off. I don't think it was necessarily that much of a faster pace even than Assassin's Apprentice. I just think with Assassin's Apprentice, it, there's kind of a learning curve. You have to figure out what Robin Hobb's style is, what's going on. You have to learn to know who Fitz is to care about him. And because these books are so heavily character-based, it's just until you care about Fitz, you're not going to care about what she's writing. And... This book does have some things that normally I would not enjoy as much. Like there is some strong romance themes uh, that go on for a bit. We do play up more the, you know, boy and his dog or boy and his wolf type trope. And normally I would comment on those things. But the fact is, Hobb does it so darn well. I just didn't really even care. And they didn't bother me in the slightest. I, I didn't even mind reading the romance or the, the parts that were a little bit starting from a trope because they go in such a different direction. The, the, the relationship between Fitz and animals that was explored in Assassin's Apprentice continues a bit on with a wolf, which I'm not considering that a spoiler because it's literally it's on the cover. There's a wolf, so you could probably figure that out. Um, and it also, it's really his relationship with others that is kind of the highlight of what's going on here. Now, it's not to say that there's no plot, because there's actually, I would say, more plot in this book probably than the first one, even though the first one takes place over a much longer period of time. Uh, really, with this book, we, we have the plot going on, and Fitz is a bit more involved in it than he was uh, for, at some points in the first book, but it really is the, the character interactions that made me fall in love with this book, and that are, I feel like, the most important aspects about it. Right away, we kind of start with, and in, in the first book too, and it's continued because at this point I've started the third book, we get uh, Fitz writing different things, we get some reflections, uh, but really we see Fitz right off the bat kind of reflecting on his past, uh, realizing a lot of the things that he had not realized as he was growing up, just uh, relationships that he didn't fully understand, people he didn't fully understand, emotions kind of growing up and, and realizing all these things that he missed when he was a child, which is interesting to see. And there were lots of kind of the like, Fitz, come on, are you not going to figure this out moments uh, in the first book too? So it was kind of nice to have that little bit like he's, he's growing up, he's getting older and a little bit wiser. And then we see him very quickly put into a different role where he feels like he's trying to help other people who are not really understanding what's going on, whether it be Verity and his queen, Ketrican, uh, where Verity just doesn't really have time for her and doesn't really understand her or what she wants. And he feels he's getting involved in their uh, relationship he has with Burrick and the relationship he has with the Lady Patience. And of course, his own relationship with Molly, uh, with still having lots of pitfalls, even as it goes. And we, we see so much of him feeling like he's really grown and feeling like he understands so much more of the world, but then still seeing he's got a long way to go. He gets to the point where, you know, he's a teenager now. He thinks he knows everything. You know, teenagers always think they know everything. And then slowly comes more into adulthood. And, and that's a theme. And it's mentioned that he really, even though he's getting older, he was still a boy in some senses. And he doesn't really like being treated that way. But he makes a lot of decisions and does a lot of things like that. And that kind of the twist, though, seeing him be the one who's who's seeing things others don't and trying to help and, and sometimes making things worse. It was an interesting way to move on and really develop the character. But then still seeing he does have a long way to go overall. Like I said, we do look at some romance and we do look at uh, some definitely boy and his wolf moments, but the plot really does move forward here quite a lot as well. In the first book, we kind of saw the plot moving, but it was more of like on the sideline because it wasn't that important to Fitz and he wasn't that involved. We saw the rise of the Red Ship Raiders, 
They're still uh, attacking and raiding and forging people. And all of that's happening, but it's kind of, it seems like it's a foreign thing to him. We're kind of hearing of it secondhand because it's not something he's experiencing. So this book, we do get to see Fitz much more involved in the events that are going on, both with the Red Ship raids, uh, with other kingdoms and relations, and with the courtly intrigue, which he gets firmly embroiled in, uh, in more ways than one. And we see him really trying to figure out who he wants to be and to be his own man to an extent, uh, kind of pulling away from some things he thought were okay while also embracing and, and still being very, very stubborn, of course. Uh, that's definitely a Fitz quality with the things that he thinks about. There was just so much in this book that I really, really loved. And I, en I enjoyed this front to back, uh, full stop. Very much, I did. The ending, though, I, I felt like I, I, I almost, when I was thinking about, I finished the book and I'm like, all right, market read on Goodreads, put a rating. I put four at first because like I said, it had some elements that I'm like, these aren't really for me. So I still really, really liked it, but I'm like, eh, I had those. And then I, I couldn't, I could not rate it five stars because the ending just was heartbreaking. Uh, and that's something that Rob is just, Rob, <laughs> Rob and Hob, you're now Rob, just Rob. And <laughs> that's something that Hob is so, so good at, is making you feel that emotion and that connection to the characters. And that happens multiple times in all of the books, of course. But in this book, especially, you start out, things seem to be going well. Uh, things, Fitz thinks things are going well, certainly. And then you just get this kind of gut punch moment where it's like, nah, this is a book by Robin Hobb. Don't you forget, <laughs> things are going to get dark. Uh, and then it continues on, and it's definitely, it never feels like it's just dark for the sake of it. I've heard people make jokes that the Farseer trilogy is just, hey, let's see how much crap we can throw at Fitz and how much we can make him suffer. And there is a lot of that, and part of that is his own doing. Part of that's just the situation that he was put into that he really didn't choose. But I feel like the things that happen to the character, and especially, I don't really want to include anything from Assassin's Quest in this review, but the, the very beginning of Assassin's Quest kind of illuminates some things as well for Fitz and really show you to more so uh, things that happened and how different things could have been. Uh, he would have made different choices. You definitely still get in this book, like I said, the moments where you're like, no, why would you, why would you do that? And there was also, as reading this, I wanted him to do something stupid. I just kept thinking, like, why don't you just kill this guy? I know there's really good reasons why you can't just go and kill this guy, and it would be bad, but you're an assassin. Figure it out. Just kill him. Just, I want him gone. Uh, but also the fact that, you know, you hate a character that much, that's, that's kind of the villain role, also really shows the good writing. But really, it's just, I, I feel like I could read... About I, I joked uh, with Ocean at the End of the Land that, that Neil Gaiman could probably write about paint drying and I would still read it. I feel like Robin Hobb could write about Fitz just slowly painting something and then watching it dry and still make it interesting. So that's, I guess, kind of the difference. Uh, specifically would have to be the character. But honestly, it, it's just the writing has really, really pulled me in. And I like I said, I, I really can't say enough good about this book. I think if you are one of those people that uh, hated the first book, Assassin's Apprentice, just couldn't get into it. Um, I do get it. Like I said, it really, there's a learning curve because you have to figure out Rob's writing style. And it was for me, I keep saying Rob. Why? Hob! Hob! Robin Hob! You have to figure out Robin Hob's writing style. And, okay, end breakdown. Uh, <laughs> and so you really do have to figure out Hobbes style uh, before you really can, can get into it and you have to know fits. This book though seemed to move faster and like I kind of commented at the beginning, I don't know that it necessarily is paced that much faster. There are still plenty of kind of slow paced parts and it is overall a slower paced fantasy story. I think it's just if you got all the way through Assassin's Apprentice uh, and you didn't hate it, you're going to like this book a lot more because you know the character, you already understand the character, and so we're really kind of, you know, treading new ground instead of going back and still having to learn it. So really moving forward at a quicker pace, having Fitz be much more involved in the events and made for uh, a more plot-heavy story while also still absolutely being a character-driven story, 
that really uh, gives us more information about Fitz, uh, really gives us a deeper look into his character, and I, I fully expect that to continue with Assassin's Quest as well. I just, I really can't think offhand, uh, from something I've read recently at least, uh, another author who's made me feel for a character so much. Um, it's definitely, there's, there's lots of, of good writers that do it, but there's something too about the prose, about the look, about how everything's done. The very deep look, how the, the story is so focused on Fitz. It's based on things he sees, things he does. We don't get other viewpoints. Uh, sometimes things are really obvious to you as the reader, uh, and Fitz just has not figured them out yet. Uh, and that was, for example, it kind of brought up in the first book, he did not understand how Molly felt. And we can see that too with his interactions with other characters. And it's also so much his interactions with other characters, we really get to know these other characters quite well also, which really shows the good writing that not only are you really involved with Fitz, but all of these other characters, through the way they interact with him, we learn so much about them and actually get deeper looks into them sometimes as well through those actions, even if he doesn't understand it. And like I said, honestly, I loved this book. This was an absolute five star. I, I couldn't rate it any lower because I just enjoyed it too darn much. I am so excited to read Assassin's Quest. I have, like I said, actually already started it. I was a little bit behind on uh, filming, so I already started a little bit. Haven't gotten that far, but very excited there. Uh, and to continue as well, I'm going to be doing the first book on the live, shaders, live ship traders. This is not a good review for me talking, apparently. I'm going to be doing the first book of the live ship traders, uh, reading that in March as well, and then doing one per month uh for that buddy read as well. I'll link to that announcement video as well in case you're interested in that and hadn't seen it previously. But that is my review of Royal Assassin, uh, book two in Farseer by Robin Hobb. Don't forget to comment and let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you agree with me or not on this, uh, or if you haven't read it, if this has sold you to continue, if you uh, didn't care much for Assassin's Apprentice and you're like, well, how's the second book? Let's watch reviews. I don't know, that could happen. Let me know your thoughts either way. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of my content.